So uh, we have seen uh, um, before uh, what we can do <coughs> uh, with the basic uh, level uh, tasks uh, concerning uh, terrestrial photography. Now I will give you an overview on uh, um, more complex applications. Uh, I will focus the attention mainly on uh, uh, cryospheric uh, issues. Uh, I, I, I work, I usually work uh, on uh, snow cover, but uh, there are uh, uh, some other applications that can range uh, from uh, snow um, microphysics uh, to snow albedo, snow height, uh, but uh, of course uh, there is a large literature about the glacier dynamics or coastal processes uh, and the vegetation phenology. Uh, but uh, I would give you just some uh, examples uh, concerning uh, uh, the snow cover. First of all, uh, um, I would introduce uh, um, a milestone concerning the snow cover um, performed by Corripio in 2004. And this is a good uh, uh, example on how it is possible to combine uh, terrestrial photographies to uh, the snow cover dynamics. Uh, he tried uh, not only to project uh, images uh, uh, on the surface, uh, and we will say, la say later how it is possible, but uh, um, he tried to uh, calibrate uh, uh, images uh, in order to retrieve uh, uh, albedo. Uh, when I say uh, calibrating, uh, I refer to the need of some references in order to convert uh, uh, digital numbers, the numbers, uh, the values uh, we have seen uh, uh, this morning uh, and uh, the numbers with, uh, we, uh, we played uh, before lunch, uh, um, that are simple numbers. Um, the conversion uh, uh, requires a target. The target could be a reference panel, could be a spectral on panel or a, a Kodak Gris card. Um, using such a target, it is possible to define uh, a calibration curve that uh, link uh, the digital numbers to uh, um, reflectance values. And more or less is very similar to what we usually do with the hyperspectral uh, measurements. So we shot an image on a target and then we uh, convert numbers to reflectance values. Uh, in this case, uh, the authors try to do this, uh, um, making a, a measurement uh, um, during the campaign, uh, having an instrument there, it could be an, uh, a pyrometer, a pyrometer, or something like this, uh, or uh, positioning a reference target in the, in the image. Unfortunately, you can do this uh, uh, exactly when you are shooting uh, the image. So you need the, the reference exactly uh, in the view, in the field of view of the camera uh, while uh, you are acquiring uh, the image because uh, the illumination could change uh, uh, rapidly in terms of uh, intensity due to the cloud cover or the uh, illumination conditions. Uh, this uh, first milestone was uh, uh, continued by uh, government um, positioning some uh, uh, targets uh, in front of different cameras. So they placed uh, a stack uh, on the right side with a um, gray or a, a black panel and a white panel. 
So shooting uh, images uh, while uh, the stack uh, was there uh, allowed uh, the authors to uh, retrieve a calibration curve and to estimate the reflectance uh, of the snow cover and to apply um, this estimation uh, to the assessment of the snow uh, on the on the canopy of this, uh, this uh, forest tree. Another uh, application concerning the microphysics uh, could be the um, the retrieval of the specific surface area. Uh, it is well known that there is a relation between uh, the short wave infrared, the near infrared uh, wavelengths, and uh, the, this uh, uh, parameter that is an important uh, input for uh, um, snow cover modeling. And uh, um, making some uh, modifications to the camera, I mean uh, uh, the removal of the uh, infrared cut filter from the, a normal uh, reflex camera. Um, it is possible to uh, remove the visible uh, um, uh, radiation and to leave just the near infrared one. Uh, something about 800 uh, nanometers, because it, it is the uh, the final sensitivity sensitivity range of uh, common uh, uh, CCDs, and um, uh, making the the calibration with the reference panel uh, using the same uh, white balance, using the same uh, um, settings for exposure and so on. Uh, the authors try to uh, take pictures uh, of the of some uh, um, vertical profiles and to assess uh, the specific surface area through the pro the profiles. And uh, it, it was a very interesting to uh, to see how it is possible to have a map of the vertical profile instead of uh, single point uh, measurements. Concerning the snow cover area, there is a large, uh, larger literature and uh, um, there are several uh, uh, approaches. Uh, um, I, uh, I would show you some uh, recent papers uh, uh, concerning the estimation of the fractional snow cover. Uh, different sites uh, uh, have been uh, investigated. Um, some are in Svalbard, Niolesund, Ornsund, um, but uh, other uh, examples uh, are referring uh, to new algorithms or uh, to um, the development of uh, uh, camera networks. Uh, the development of camera networks imply, uh, implies, uh, of course, uh, the need of standard uh, tools. Um, and this can be done uh, using uh, the same algorithms, uh, the same procedures, uh, the same cameras, and, uh, and so on. Uh, of course, uh, uh, there is the need of these networks, especially in the Alps or in other uh, um, populated areas, but it could be uh, useful to think about uh, uh, such a network also in uh, remote areas uh, like Svalbard, where, uh, um, especially in, uh, during this moment, uh, uh, the possibility to, 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 to work on field uh, is a little bit uh, reduced. From this perspective, uh, uh, we are working on a contribution to the uh, next SES report uh, um, where uh, uh, we are collecting information about cameras uh, in, uh, in Svalbard Islands. Snow 8. Uh, uh, Using uh, different techniques, uh, I told you something about uh, 
segmentation, uh, it is possible uh, to detect uh, the height of the snow uh, close to a stick. Um, this could be important because uh, not always it's possible to have uh, uh, snow height devices. And um, inside the, some software, software packages, uh, um, the authors are developing uh, uh, some procedures uh, in order to detect from object uh, in front of the camera the height uh, of the snow. You can see how many processes, how many steps are necessary in order to uh, estimate the, the snow height. Um, some other work uh, has been done in, for vegetation uh, uh, phenology. Uh, there are uh, uh, more developed uh, networks in this uh, field. Uh, I should mention uh, the Senocam uh, in, uh, in the US. Uh, um, there is a large data set with more than uh, 700 uh, cameras. And there is also a um, European network uh, working uh, in um, uh, uh, European uh, um, countries like Italy, Austria, uh, Finland, and, uh, and so on. Of course, uh, there is a need of more observations in the Arctic. And some groups uh, are working uh, on this, uh, uh, also in, uh, in, uh, in Svalbard. I refer to the University of Tromso. Uh, if you go there, uh, you can find uh, two different websites. Uh, in this website, uh, there is a web map service where you can find uh, the different sites. You can find uh, uh, picture from this camera that are routinely uh, acquired, um, you can find uh, um, indexes uh, uh, representing uh, the, the activity of vegetation uh, in those uh, um, different settings. Uh, having a large number of these cameras, it, it is possible to have uh, um, large statistics um, that could be useful for assessing, uh, I don't know, CO2 fluxes, uh, for supporting validation activities for uh, remotely sensed data, and, and so on. Uh, this is an example uh, from um, the US uh, uh, data set. Um, the index you normally used for vegetation is the a GCC, that is the green uh, chromatic uh, uh, component. And it is the ratio between uh, uh, the green uh, digital number and the sum of the red, green, and blue. Uh, nothing different from uh, uh, numbers that we have seen uh, before. Uh, this is the reason why I spend my time uh, uh, for preparing a exercises uh, and for uh, stressing you on uh, managing this kind of numbers because the operation, the calculation are very easy. And uh, you can see also in this uh, example uh, uh, the difference between uh, a fixed uh, white balance and an automatic uh, white balance. This example comes from the paper uh, presented by the uh, US Panocam uh, network. And um, uh, this picture is very important for showing you that uh, uh, having a fixed uh, white balance, uh, the noise in the evolution of this index uh, during the season uh, is quite uh, uh, reduced. And there are some different routines for uh, uh, assessing this kind of uh, behavior. Um, different algorithms exist for the snow cover retrieval. The first one is the blue thresholding uh, for whom uh, um, a 
extended the practice uh, I mentioned about this kind of algorithm. It is very easy. You need just to, um, to find uh, in the blue color component uh, uh, the peak in uh, that area. Um, you need to fix uh, a starting uh, threshold in order to remove uh, lower values from the analysis. And um, once uh, you detect uh, um, at least one peak, you can uh, retrieve uh, this threshold. Um, this technique uh, is very basic. Uh, it works well having uh, high sun elevation. And uh, uh, looking at the closest uh, area in front of the of, of the camera, um, we can have problems uh, when uh, we are looking at the far away um, areas. Uh, I'm, I refer to mountains in the background, for example, or if we have uh, uh, shadows. Uh, or uh, um, bad illuminated conditions. Uh, this is the reason why uh, algorithms uh, are uh, evolving. Uh, there is another tool, uh, the name is uh, Practice, uh, made by uh, uh, Harer. And this uh, tool uh, um, is based on the combination between uh, the blue thresholding uh, uh, technique and the principal component analysis. Uh, the principal component analysis is focused on shadowed, shadowed areas and increases uh, consistently the performance uh, of uh, the blue thresholding in uh, uh, long distance uh, uh, areas. Another algorithm uh, was presented in 2019 and it is based on uh, estimating the spectral similarity um, and it is based on a different uh, um, color space model um, reducing the number of variables and working uh, with the, uh, the concept of spectral similarity. And there is another uh, approach based on uh, artificial, uh, uh, on uh, supervised learning uh, uh, with different uh, techniques, artificial neural network, uh, supporting vector machine, and so on. And uh, it was devoted to support uh, uh, the use of um, crowd sourced, uh, sourced uh, um, cameras. Tools. Uh, the, the request uh, is always uh, to have uh, uh, ready to use uh, tools. And the answer, from my point of view, is to uh, uh, write uh, scripts uh, uh, by yourself until uh, a standardization uh, will be developed. Uh, the standardization could imply uh, uh, the need of a software that could run. Uh, everywhere. Uh, I suggested to use uh, FMI Prot, uh, but uh, unfortunately uh, you can have problems uh, with the uh, uh, installation because uh, you need a lot of dependencies, uh, uh, you need to customize the installation to your computer and, uh, and so on, but it is a, a good uh, uh, tool. There is practice as I already mentioned, uh, it is a, a package that work on uh, MATLAB. So you need to have a MATLAB license and uh, this could be a limitation. Um, another uh, opportunity is to use some libraries available for R, the R programming environment. Uh, these libraries, uh, sometimes are uh, available uh, uh, from uh, uh, some networks like the Fenocam networks. And you need just to combine the different libraries in order to have uh, the ideal tool for your uh, purposes. Um, but I, I think that the scripting is the 
the best option because uh, you can have always uh, different problems uh, uh, with your images and you have to customize every time uh, uh, procedures for your uh, requirements. What we have done uh, this morning, uh, we have seen a lot of uh, techniques uh, and uh, we tried to start uh, doing uh, uh, data processing. Uh, the practice uh, uh, could uh, uh, seem very low, very basic, but uh, uh, the techniques I showed you uh, are important uh, when I need to select images. Uh, I need to check if uh, files are corrupted. Uh, this can be done just looking at the image size. A corrupted file has an image size uh, uh, close to zero kbytes, so there is nothing inside. Um, you can have problems with the low illumination, so you need to remove uh, dark uh, images, and I think that we have seen also that. Uh, we, we need to, to remove intense cloud cover, and uh, I submitted to the students some examples. We need to check the camera orientation, and I will do this uh, later in the second practice. And we need to remove uh, lens interferences like raindrops or ice crosses. Uh, also in this case, we can have some uh, already developed uh, libraries uh, for doing that. The image classification uh, require uh, um, the use of uh, supervised or unsupervised uh, classification techniques. We, we could need to make some segmentation or to identify the, um, the, the surface types in terms of snow cover. And of course, there is a large effort in order to uh, extract the final grid that can be combined uh, with other uh, um, data. Uh, and the formatation of data could be also a problem when we need to have an uh, interoperable uh, uh, data set useful for other uh, groups. All of these uh, um, procedures uh, can be done using uh, different softwares, uh, different procedures, uh, different approaches, uh, and the combination of, of, of uh, all the available uh, techniques uh, could, be, could be endless uh, uh, to be described. Uh, another question was, how can I project uh, the image on the ground? Uh, we need uh, to uh, make some effort uh, on uh, using uh, some uh, photogrammetric techni techniques. The, the, um, we are doing uh, monoplotting. That means that we are projecting just a single oblique image. And we need to uh, convert uh, the real coordinates uh, of uh, some ground control points to uh, some projected uh, coordinates uh, on the image plane of our uh, camera. Uh, what, what, we need, what do we need? Just uh, some mathematical uh, operations. Uh, the image is a matrix. Uh, we need uh, to uh, make operations like rotation, translation of matrix, matrices, uh, uh, at different uh, uh, levels. We need trigonometry and uh, we have just to play with uh, uh, trigonometric functions. Uh, it is not so easy, uh, but maybe it could be funny to, uh, to use these equations and to put together uh, mathematical operations. Um, there are some uh, tools. I said uh, something about pic to map that is a monoplotting uh, uh, plugin for QGIS. Um, it works with the OpenGL uh, libraries, so you could have problems not with QGIS, 
installation, but uh, with the installation of these libraries uh, on your computer. And uh, it's very painful to do this. Um, there are other options using uh, web-based uh, uh, tools, uh, but uh, of course, uh, web-based tools uh, are limited in terms uh, of functionalities and on the amount of images you can process. Uh, before doing monoplotting, we, I need to stress again that we must know exactly what kind of sensor we are um, in front of us. Different formats are available. Uh, you, generally, you can find uh, uh, the name of the camera, then you have to, um, to go on uh, internet looking at the sensor format. You can find a name sometimes, but usually you can find uh, um, uh, a ratio uh, expressed in terms of inches. And uh, after that, uh, you have to go on a table looking at uh, the dimension of uh, the, peak, the sensor, the width and uh, the height, the area, the number of pixels that depends uh, on the image resolution, as already mentioned uh, uh, this morning. And uh, the funny thing is that uh, the pixel elements are not square, as you, we are used to think about uh, from the images, but uh, could, could have also different uh, shapes. The first step before monoplotting, uh, uh, having some uh, information about the sensor, is to uh, know the position of your camera. Uh, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the coordinate system but I would refresh uh, the need of uh, uh, knowing exactly what are the um, coordinate system of your uh, ground control points. Uh, there are uh, spherical coordinates, uh, planar coordinates, uh, but you can have different approximations uh, required by the location of your study. For example, if you are working uh, in the Arctic, uh, sometimes you can have uh, uh, conical uh, um, projections instead uh, of uh, cylindrical projections. And usually you have to combine different coordinate systems. Since uh, uh, satellite data, for example, uh, are uh, standardized uh, using uh, uh, different formats. If you want to combine uh, uh, Landsat images uh, or uh, MODIS images with uh, uh, Sentinel images, uh, you can have different coordinate systems, different projections. And uh, this is very important when uh, you take positions on the field, uh, when you use a global positioning system uh, um, that uh, in general uh, has a standard uh, setting uh, uh, for uh, um, latitude and longitude uh, coordinate. So you can have different uh, uh, projections, different systems. You have to take care about uh, uh, harmonizing uh, all of them before starting processing uh, your data. Some problems uh, uh, comes out, uh, from, com come out from uh, your camera because I told you that there are some lenses, and the lenses tend uh, to uh, distort your image. Uh, depending on the uh, Fourier optics of your camera, you can have uh, different uh, distortions. Uh, you can have barrel distortions, pincushion distortions, the most uh, uh, popular, but you can have also other kind of distortions. Um, apparently, you cannot see such distortions, but if you process your images, uh, you can see that uh, they are present. And you need to uh, remove 
to correct uh, your coordinates uh, in order to have uh, a real projection of, uh, um, of your camera view. Uh, also in this case, uh, uh, we are talking about uh, mathematics. Uh, barrel and pin cushion distortion are uh, relatively easy, easy to, to be removed uh, using uh, a polynomial uh, um, equation. Uh, where different uh, um, parameters uh, must be um, estimated. Having uh, this uh, um, factor uh, assessed, uh, we can uh, remove uh, the correction, uh, we, we can remove the distortion knowing the distance of each point from the focal point of our lens. And um, some operations are needed. For example, uh, we need to make uh, a chessboard calibration. Uh, it is uh, easy to, to think about that uh, having a chessboard uh, in front of our camera, we can see if the lines available in the chessboard are distorted or, uh, or not. Um, there are also in this case some uh, tools available. Uh, OpenCV is an um, open source software and uh, there there are uh, some uh, um, functionalities uh, aimed on uh, calibrating your camera uh, parameters. So you have to take different uh, uh, pictures of the chessboard uh, and then uh, uh, optimizing uh, the matrices, uh, it is possible to estimate uh, the parameters I've, sh I've show, uh, showed you before in the equation. Of course, you, know, you must know the sensor type, the sensor geometry, the focal length, uh, and uh, also the camera, camera optical center we are used to think that the center in our camera is just in the middle of our uh, uh, image, but unfortunately uh, it is not uh, always like that. Um, maybe it is shifted by few pixels, but uh, sometimes a few pixels means uh, meters or more uh, um, uncertainty. So it is very important to take care about everything. We can have also perspective distortion. The camera must be known in terms of position, but uh, during the installation uh, we can have uh, an azimuth. It means that uh, uh, the camera must be rotated looking at what uh, is the study area. We, we, we could have uh, um, a pitch and a roll angles, and uh, we must know exactly uh, where, how much uh, is the, the value. Um, we can use uh, positioning systems uh, uh, in kilometers or something like that in order to reduce them, but uh, it is very hard to um, estimate precisely these uh, uh, angles. So in uh, our applications uh, we make a sort of uh, iterative uh, process in order to estimate these angles uh, um, reducing the error associated to the projection of ground control points. So we could have ground control points used for assessing the angles and we can have another uh, ground control points data set for assessing the final uh, error. This is an example for, from a paper um, described by Kepsky in 2017. Uh, this is Ornsund, there is a camera looking at the bay and uh, um, there are different ground control points that were used for uh, um, estimating uh, the uncertainty in the projection uh, basis. Uh, real coordinates, I told you before that uh, 
uh, we can have uh, different formats. Uh, it is very important, uh, uh, of course, to put them uh, in the same uh, system, but also to estimate uh, um, the angular coordinates respect to the uh, to the camera. Uh, so, if we have uh, uh, our ground control points. Uh, we need to uh, estimate the distances from our camera and also to estimate uh, the angles in order to rotate the image plane exactly in front of the camera view. This can be done um, converting real planar coordinates to real angular coordinates. After that, uh, we need to reduce the number of coordinates moving from real angle coordinates to planar image uh, coordinates. In this case, uh, as I said reduce, reduce but uh, um, it is appropriate to say that uh, the third dim dimension is constant for all the points. Since we are projecting uh, pixel elements in front of uh, our optica, optical center, uh, where the distance is the focal length. Knowing this parameter, uh, we need just to uh, convert angles to the sensor width at the sensor height in order to have the position in the uh, in image sensor. And these information are the, those that we extract from the image. The image is a, a matrix. We have uh, horizontal uh, uh, pixel elements and the vertical pixel elements. If we know the number of pixels in the vertical and the, and the horizontal uh, uh, direction, we can estimate uh, how many millimeters uh, uh, they are distant from the, the center of the of the image. What are what is the contribution of this kind of uh, discipline? Um, the first one is the estimation of the fractional snow cover. This is uh, an important information. It is an essential variable. We could say uh, it is uh, useful for hydrological purposes, for glaciological purposes. It is very important uh, for optical uh, remote sensing. Uh, maybe it could be useful also for microwave remote sensing. Um, we could use this information also in atmospheric sciences. And uh, it could be important also for people studying uh, the, the ecology of some, uh, some places. Um, in the future, um, uh, we are working on estimating the snow reflectance using the array infrared uh, photography. And uh, uh, we are also working uh, using a more uh, intense phot photogrammetric uh, uh, contribution on the surface roughness. Next time, I will uh, uh, show you something. Um, why it is important uh, to combine this technique to the remote sensing of snow? Because we have a lot of satellites. Uh, we have uh, uh, a lot of uh, platforms uh, uh, that are now present. Uh, they were not present in the past. Uh, sometimes we have platforms overlapping, overlapping between each other. Sometimes there is the, some discontinuities. Uh, the revisiting time of this um, uh, platform is not always the same. We can have different uh, spatial resolutions. And um, so uh, it, it could be very useful to have uh, a common term uh, to, for all of these platforms in order to can uh, uh, compare these information. This information. Um, Photography can do that because uh, cameras are always there, 
are always operating, more or less. Um, cloud cover is not a problem, not always. Um, the spatial resolution is higher than uh, uh, some satellites, and uh, the time resolution uh, is uh, appropriate. We will have always a picture for every uh, revisit uh, uh, of a satellite. Uh, in terms uh, of resolution, uh, um, we are used to make some uh, uh, intercomparison between uh, different platforms. Uh, I refer to the use of uh, Landsat or Sentinel data uh, in comparison uh, with uh, Modis data, for example. Uh, terrestrial photography could be an added value because uh, we have uh, another spatial resolution, an higher spatial resolution, and we can work uh, uh, for the validation of uh, um, higher resolved uh, platforms. Um, why we need su such a um, validating technique? Uh, because uh, satellites uh, in their uh, 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 I can say um, fine elements uh, have different uh, uh, spectral components, but uh, uh, they don't know how convert how to convert uh, these numbers uh, in terms of uh, uh, area covered by snow. So um, usually we use uh, um, uh, an index, a spectral index, uh, the so-called uh, normalized difference. Uh, spectral index. Uh, it is uh, the combination of different uh, bands and uh, we are used to uh, convert this number to the fractional snow cover. Having uh, uh, data from uh, terrestrial photography, we can uh, um, define better these relations. We can have uh, uh, site-specific relations. This is an important issue. And uh, we could uh, have uh, this kind of relations uh, uh, spread uh, in a regional basis. So we could have different uh, relations uh, at different sites. Um, this is uh, a picture highlighting the importance uh, of um, this kind of ground truth technique. Uh, we have uh, a high temporal scale. Uh, we have a high um, a limited spatial scale, but we have automation. We don't need to send people uh, there. Uh, data processing is a little bit tricky. Uh, this is a paper from me in 2019, the combination of terrestrial photography to remote sensing. Um, I, I used a little bit uh, different uh, techniques compared to the practice uh, uh, we have done, but uh, I tried to improve uh, the efficiency on estimating the fraction of snow cover. Um, I would divide these pictures in three different uh, components. The image classification uh, that uh, can be done with supervised methods, uh, blue thresholding or spectral similarity an orthorectification uh, component uh, that is a uh, more or less standard photogrammetic uh, uh, procedure and the remote sensing uh, um, using uh, uh, eventually uh, ground truth made by uh, hyperspectral measurement. Uh, the first, uh, uh, this paper was uh, made uh, in order to uh, develop uh, the spectral similarity algorithm. Uh, in this picture, you can see uh, the study site in the Alps, and uh, you can see different grids. Uh, the blue grid is the globe snow, pro um, snow product, uh, a single uh, pixel element of this product. The yellow one is the modis uh, pixel element. And the magenta one is the grid uh, retrieved by Landsat uh, satellites. The gray area is the area 
um, projected from uh, the camera view that you can see in the B panel. So uh, we need to, to define a mask where the statistics for each pixel can be uh, uh, optimized. For each view, we defined uh, um, uh, quality control for assessing the, the shift of the image uh, uh, in the camera. And we use this spectral similarity approach um, where we moved from a Euclidean space, uh, vector space, um, the RGB uh, color model, to an angular um, space model. Uh, where um, we look at the distance uh, in terms of spectral similarity between uh, um, our pixels and a reference. The reference is the, uh, the white. So uh, the, spe the, 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 compon the color components of, of the reference are uh, 255 for the R, the G, and the blue co color component. Mm, looking at these distances from this reference, we can uh, clusterize uh, uh, the image, we can segment the image, and we can detect different uh, clusters that are well divided. Uh, the position of the cluster and the sides can be associated with uh, the recognition of uh, snow or not snow areas. Uh, eventually, they can also describe uh, the occurrence of shadows. So we are able uh, to um, uh, assess uh, the snowed area uh, independently from uh, the illumination conditions and uh, uh, in the, um, uh, with more efficiency compared to the standard blue thresholding uh, uh, algorithm. Uh, we made some performance tests uh, working on a limited data set uh, where we tried also to, to make some supervised classification, um, Malanobis distance, maximum likelihood, minimum distance, parallel epiped classifier, and so on. And we compare our, our results also with the blue thresholding. Um, blue thresholding can work uh, pretty well uh, in the front of the camera, but uh, um, there are some problems. And using spectral similarity, we can increase uh, the performance on uh, the classification of snow covered areas. Um, we are doing uh, something uh, similar also at the Neolisund. We have a camera uh, uh, close to the climate change tower. Uh, it is a facility uh, in, uh, close to Neolisund. It is uh, in the left bottom side uh, of this picture. Uh, and we are working uh, uh, on the data set coming from the Zeppelin Observatory, where a punted zoom camera is available. And there are uh, different views uh, um, with a long time uh, series. Um, we are processing uh, uh, five different cameras, we can say, with uh, 10 different perspective views. We are analyzing more than 100,000 images, and uh, um, we are working on uh, three different uh, masks. masks. Uh, one related to the sky, we would assess the, the cloud cover. Uh, one to the sea, uh, we could detect uh, uh, the naval traffic or the occurrence of sea ice. And uh, one, of course, uh, uh, associated with the, the land uh, uh, where we can uh, estimate the snow cover area and we would detect uh, the occurrence of uh, seasonal uh, coastal lakes. Uh, we spent a lot of time uh, for the projection uh, task. Uh, you can see different colors. 
uh, each color um, represent the projection of each view. And uh, um, of course, uh, some views uh, are inside uh, the others. There is a, uh, an overlapping uh, uh, region, and this could be useful for uh, uh, working on the multi scale. Uh, um, issues. What we can do with these images, uh, we can uh, uh, reconstruct the um, uh, snow cover evolution uh, during different years. Uh, we have uh, close to 20 years. Uh, we can define the, uh, the melting uh, period and the uh, Knowing the accumulation period, and uh, we can, uh, for example, uh, extract some uh, time information like the end of the melting season. This could, could be important because uh, uh, we can uh, uh, obtain this information uh, every season and we can uh, compare this information to other um, data, data sources. Uh, this, these are the improvements that uh, we are working on. Uh, we have a nighttime uh, camera uh, with uh, a near infrared uh, um, sensor. We have a near infrared uh, uh, so light source, so we can shot images during the polar winter. And we could see what happened to the surface uh, also during the night uh, without uh, uh, any kind of uh, light pollution uh, uh, in the surroundings. Uh, another opportunity is given by the stereoscopic camera. We have uh, two different uh, sensors, uh, one in the visible range, uh, one in the near infrared range, and uh, uh, at the end uh, we can have uh, a stereoscopic system uh, with four bands uh, um, completing the uh, spectral range from the visible to the near uh, infrared. Uh, 